In this video, I'll show you a demo of working through project 1B of module 1. When you submit your project, you're going to be working through project 1A, but this shows you most of the steps and the, the content is pretty similar, um, but you will be submitting project 1A. You can download or print off the instructions from the website. So I have project 1B here again, you're going to be doing project 1A. Remember that before you upload it, you have to save the file, change the number one to a number two. So I'm gonna start by doing that. I'm just gonna save it to the desktop for now. And remember, I'm gonna change number one to number two. Okay, so I have my file with the proper name now as I work through the demo here, the first step, so I'm going to start with step number one. Kelly is a senior in college and has a part-time job where she tutors students interested in analyzing earnings. So the first thing it asks me to do is open the job analysis worksheet and auto fit to adjust the width of column A. So here's the job analysis worksheet. We have two different worksheets here. Open job analysis and here's column A. And I'm going to flip back and forth between the, the instructions and the um, Excel file itself. So it's asking me to use auto fit to adjust the width of column A. The reason we want to do that is you can see some of the words are spilling over into the next column. We want to keep everything within column A. The easiest way to auto fit something we can just drag over. But the easiest way to auto fit is if you double click when the mouse is between that A and B line then that will make it as small as possible while still showing all of the text in that column. So we've done number one. So number two, in cell A1, enter the text Kelly's part-time tutoring job in A1. So if we look at cell A1 here, uh, notice that this, is, this cell has been merged. So rather than just one cell, this cell takes up four columns. And it's asking us to type in Kelly's part-time tutoring job. And to type that again, I just clicked on the cell and started typing. And I'll press enter. Right now, everything is justified to the right. One thing to remember here is you have to spell everything perfectly. If there are any spelling errors, then um, you won't get credited for that for that point. Kelly's part-time tutoring job. Okay, looks good. So the second half of number two, center the merged range. So here in the alignment tab, I can just click on this one right here. You can see it says center, center the content, and it's put that content into the center. So we've finished number two. Number three, apply heading one cell style to the merged range A1 to D1. So this is that merged range that they're talking about. And we can change the cell styles by going up to the styles area. And it asked for heading one. So I'm just gonna click on this heading one and that will change the size of the font and the color of the font in this case. So we've finished off number three. Heading over to number four, enter the text revenue in cell A2 and merge the contents of that range A2 to D2. So revenue goes in A2. A2, I'm just gonna type, I, I selected the cell by clicking it with my mouse and I'm just gonna type in revenue and I'll press enter. So I've entered the revenue text now I have to merge the contents of A2 to D2. So here I can just highlight these four cells by clicking and dragging over, and I can click that Merge button. Uh, number five, clear the contents of E3. So if we look at cell E3, that's Q4 here. So I'm just gonna select that cell by clicking on it with the mouse. Then I'm just gonna press the delete button on the keyboard and it'll get, a, get rid of everything in that cell. 
So next it asks me to enter the data shown in table one into the range B6 to D6. So if we go back to the sheet here, B6 to D6, that's these three cells here. So it's the revenue for chemistry. And B6 should be 1800. I'm just gonna type this in, 1800. Then I'll press tab to move to the next cell. And then 1950. And then tab to the next cell, 2020. I'll tab over again. So now I've entered all of that text. I've entered those numbers. Now we're on step seven. It's asking me to use the fill handle to copy the formula in cell B7 into the range C7 to D7. So let's go to B7 right here. And using the fill handle, it wants me to copy that formula to all the way to D7. So remember that if we copy what's in these cell, uh, what's in this cell, it won't just paste the value in, it's gonna paste the formula in. And if we look at this formula, we can, once we have this selected, if we go up to the formula bar here, it shows us what's happening in that cell. So in this cell, B7, it's the sum of B4 to B6. So B4, B5, and B6, when those are added together, it gives us 4,810. So I could just type in equals sum uh, to, to sum this up here, but we can copy the formula just by clicking and dragging this little uh, box at the bottom. So you see the little green box. Just click and drag that over and then let go. And it copies the formula over and it updates to calculate the columns properly. So that's number seven. Number eight, merge and center the range A9 to D9. A9 to D9. So we can click and drag to highlight these four columns. And then I'm just gonna click on the merge and center button. And now it's one, uh, one cell that takes up four columns. Next, number nine, select the range B11 to D14. So B11 to D14. and apply the accounting number format with two decimal places and dollar sign as the symbol. Right now, so these are numbers, but these numbers are displayed differently than this range of numbers. Because this is still money that we're talking about, we want to make sure that it's the, the proper format. And to do that, we can go up to the, once we have this selected, so make sure you click and drag to select this entire range of B11 to D14, then uh, on the home ribbon, if you go over to the number area, you can just click in uh, from that drop down, and we're going to use the accounting format. You can see there's a lot of different types of numbers, but today we're just looking at the accounting format. So once you do that, the values don't change, but now everything um, is, is using a dollar sign and two decimal places and a comma for every thousand. So that was number nine. Looking at number 10, the expenses table shows uh, expenses for math, physics, and chemistry. Wants to calculate the total expenses that she incurred over the three quarters by adding up the total expenses for each quarter. So in cell E14, create a formula using the sum function and calculate the total expenses over the last three quarters of B14 to D14. So in cell E14, we're gonna use sum to get that total. E14. Here we could use the auto sum and, and go across this way, but let's type this one in. So with this cell selected, you have that green selection around it. Just start typing equals, so the equal sign. And then we're gonna start typing the word sum, and you'll notice that it gives you hints as to what different formulas you can use. So we'll double click on the word sum now that's changed to a capital, and there's a bracket showing what, uh, what we can do next. It's also duplicated up here as well. So we are going to sum this range. So to, to get that, I just clicked 
and dragged over so that we have B14 to D14. You could type that as well. So if you were going to type it on the keyboard, it would just be the letter B14 colon D14. And then you can just press enter. And what that's done is finished off that, uh, that little formula for us. Okay, so next round number 11, update the, fall, the formatting of the merged range A16 to D16 as described below. So if we go back here, A16 to D16, um, that's a merged range and you can see that the, visually it looks different than the one above. So it wants us to bold the contents. So make sure that's highlighted, that's selected. And then in the font area under the home ribbon, you can just click the B to make it bold. The keyboard shortcut is Control and B, and that would do the same thing. I'm going to change the font to Calibri. So from here, we can just change the font. Change the font size to 13 in the same area. It doesn't have a 13, so we can actually type that in. I'm just going to type in 13. Change the font color to green, accent 6, darker 25. So here's where we change the font color. This is the, the font background, or the, the fill color. We only want this one. We want the font color. So if we click that little drop down, oops, 10th column, 5th row. There we go, that's the right one. And now we've changed the font, the size, and the color of that text. So now we're on step number 12, and here we're going to see if this is profitable for, for her. So in cell B18, create a formula um, that looks at the total expenses and total revenue. So if we go over to the sheet in B18, right, B18, um, we want to see if this is profitable. So we're going to look at subtracting the expenses, B14, from the revenue in B7. So if we look to make sure we have everything here, B14, so this area is the expenses. And this area is the revenue. So we can just start typing equals. And here we can just reference the cells and perform some math on those cells. So we still have this highlighted. We've still typed, uh, we, we started the equal sign. Now we can actually click on this cell and you can see the, the blue dashed highlight around that. Then I'm going to press the subtract key on my keyboard and next I'll click B14. You could type this out as well. So you could just type equals B7 minus B14. And now I'm just going to press enter. And what that's done for us is just subtracted the expenses from the revenue. And that is number 12. Using the fill handle, fill the range C18 to D18 with the formula from B18. So we want to go and uh, do the same thing in here. We could go in and type this manually and type this manually, uh, but to save some time, we can just use the fill handles, that little green box, drag over and release. And it has copied the formula, not the exact same values, but the formula to reference these cells as well. So it's smart enough to recognize that here we were in the same column subtracting this from this when we drag it over and copy you can see the formula up here it's subtracting this from this in the same column and i'm going to press escape just to get off of those selections so now number 13 change the tab color of the job analysis worksheet to blue 
So eighth column, first row. To do that, we can just right click on, so these are the, the tabs that they're talking about, but here we can just right click, tab color, and what was the color again? Eighth column, first row of standard colors. Standard colors, blue. There we go. Um, it doesn't really look like anything changed, but if you go to the other sheet that we have open, you can see that change there. Up next, select the clustered, so we're at 14 now. Uh, clustered column chart with revenue. Update the chart as described below. So let's find that chart first. So this is the one that they're, they're talking about. Uh, that chart was already created, but we're going to make some changes to it. So change the chart style to style number two. When we click on this, um, it's it's pretty easy to change the the look of these charts, and just click on it. Now you'll see chart tools, design, and format. If you click on design, it gives you some options. If you click on format, you can make some other changes as well. But right now we're going to stay inside the design ribbon, and you can look at these different styles. And as you hover over them with your mouse, it actually updates the chart. And it wants us to use style number two. Style two, so if I click on that, and now I click out, just click anywhere in the background, um, it's updated the, the look of that chart for me. Move the chart to its own sheet. Use Q1 to Q3 revenue as the name for the new sheet. So um, I have all of my raw data here and the chart is on the same sheet. Sometimes it's nice to just create a totally new sheet to have your, your visuals. To do that, we can just right click and click move chart. Where do you want to move it? We want to put it on a new sheet and the title of that sheet should be Q1 to Q3 revenue. Remember again that the the way you spell these um, titles really important for being graded accurately. And we can just click OK, and it's created a new tab for us. And then if we go back to job analysis, it's moved that chart away for us, so things are less cluttered and a little bit cleaner. So now number 15, switch back to the job analysis worksheet, select non-adjacent ranges, A11 to A13 and D11 to D13. So to select non-adjacent, it just means here um, A11 to A13. So click and drag, just click and drag to highlight those cells. And then if we go to try to select these, you'll notice that we're only selecting this one and not, not this group. So if you hold down the control key, you can select multiple areas at the same time. So now I do have A11 to A13 and D11 to D13 highlighted. And again, we can just do that by click and drag for the first selection, then hold down the control key, click and drag, and then you can um, release the mouse and release the control key. Now both of these are selected. So I've selected those and I want to create a 2D pie chart out of that. So what we're doing here is we're using these values and these titles to create a pie chart. To do that we can go up to insert and then under the charts area we're just going to click on the pie chart and we can click on the 2D pie chart. And really quickly it creates that chart for us. So these are the values and these are the titles. In the placeholder title, enter expenses in Q3. So we can change the title just by backspacing out and then expenses in Q3. And then we can click on the background and it'll update that for us. Change the chart style 
to style three. So I can click on that chart and then go up to design and that's style number three. So I'll click on style number three and then move the chart to its own sheet using Q3 expenses as the name for the new sheet. So I can just right click, move chart to a new sheet and the title of that again was Q3 expenses. And I'll click OK. Now I have that new tab, Q3 expenses with that chart. OK, so that is the end of this demo. We can see what we have here. We have our charts and those charts look like the ones that we have on our sheet so I'm going to save this just by going up to the little save button and I will submit this so I'm logged into the Cengage mind tap I'm going to upload my file so again just make sure that it's saved and I've changed the that number one should change to a number two you should change that um, then I will upload the file and submit. Now I can view the report. And 100 out of 100. Okay, so I've done everything correctly. If there was something that I missed or something that I didn't do correctly, you would be able to see in each one of these areas what the issue was, and you can go back and resubmit. So you have typically three submissions for each project.